Good morning. It's project day. Um, one of the things we're going to try to do today is we are actually looking at um, just doing some things to the pergola. So I've got a BJ's 10 by 12 pergola. Put a light in here last year. Um, it's got a Wi-Fi bulb in it, which is kind of nice. Changes color when you want it to, all that fun stuff. But I want to put a TV out here. Um, so first thing I figured out was where I wanted to put it, which corner or which end. Um, how I wanted to mount it was a concern. And then the size of the TV, right? Those were the big things to think about here. Um, and as I kind of went around, I even threw around the idea of getting a projector um, and just having it be on a screen somewhere, but kind of fell through. I feel like this is just going to be a better way to go about it. So I'm actually going to mount it in this corner here um, from the roof down. I know there's different mounts you can buy. There's ones that are on just pedestals that you could bring in and out, things like that. I wanted mine to look a little more permanent, semi-permanent, because I will be taking the TV and the mount down in the fall. That way there's nothing here that can rust or get old. Uh, but let me go ahead and show you what we've got for tools that we're going to go ahead and use to do this today. First off, you need a TV. Um, I only got a 32 inch uh, smart TV. I didn't go crazy. This isn't gonna be cable. I'm just gonna use you know, my Netflix, my YouTube, my Disney Plus Prime and all that fun stuff, right? It's already built in. So that's nice. Um, and I didn't need a huge one. Uh, it's not like I'm gonna be out here for days on end, you know, binging, but at least when we're out here, we've got something to watch. The next thing is a mount. And you can see here, I've got a ceiling mount kit got it off Amazon. It was only like 40 bucks, but it's going to sit right up here and you can see it can adjust so I can change the angle of how it sits. And it came with extra pipe pieces. So again, you've got these guys here, which bolt into different lengths. So you can have the TV hang down farther if you need to. So I'm going to keep mine relatively short. So it's kind of in the corner here with the, uh, the awnings and it'll be out of the way and i can also pivot it on this this whole bottom piece spins pretty lightly so that'll keep it nice and where it needs to be because i could even take this turn it or drop it and turn it so it's out here too depending on who wants to watch it and where the other thing we have is a cover that's not an outdoor tv i don't need an outdoor tv necessarily because if i keep it covered and it's only out here for a couple months out of the year it should be fine basically it's a grill cover um, but it has the Velcro all around the back. You can see everything can Velcro up. It's even got a spot to put the remote. Uh, keeps everything covered up nicely. And then again, in the fall, this will all come down and we will um, bring it in the house, put it away for the winter, all right? Now, the last thing was how am I gonna mount the pole, right? Um, I thought about, you know, there's you can use things like a self-tapping or a sheet metal screw, things like that. That's fine. But because I wanted it to have a little bit of a cleaner look and I want to be able to take it out and in in the winter, um, I figured why not use a bolt? So I've already, you can see I've mapped out the holes based on the kit. Again, 40 bucks on Amazon. This was like 15, 16 bucks on Amazon. You can get different colors. This I got from Costco. It was under 150 bucks. Um, again, I just needed a TV for, for outdoors. And then this guy is my new thing. This is about 20 bucks on Amazon. It's a threaded rivet tool. And basically, all as you can see here, is it takes these rivet nuts, right? And they've got a thread inside of them and allows you to put it in through the hole, pull it tight against the metal, and then you have a place to put a bolt. So we'll be mounting it with a bolt and a washer, four holes, it'll go right in, and now it'll be secure. It's bolted into place. It's stronger than just a screw, and I can take it out very easily, or if I need to, it mount other things there. So not terribly difficult. Had to get a couple things in the house right before we started this process um, and figure out, you know, the sizing and things like that. But it came with a template, which was kind of nifty. So I basically mocked it all up, figured out how it was going to sit where it needed to be. And then I used this to mark my holes, which you can see right there. Got my little mark lines. I've already drilled one. So I've got three more to go. So I'm going to go ahead and drill those out. I've got the Milwaukee and we're gonna go ahead and put those holes out and then we'll do the rivets. Safety first, these aren't the right, you know, they're not safety glasses, but they're protective. That's all I need because little metal shards are gonna be thrown around. I do have a little bit of a covering here, but I do have to make sure when I'm done, I sweep and vacuum this up really well. 
because again, you don't want people coming out on your deck and getting little metal shavings all over themselves. That would not be a good day, especially for the kids. Uh, two holes down, two more to go. Let's keep going. And when you're drilling through metal, start off slow, right? Just a little bit because you want to make a little divot hole so that you're not sliding all over the place. And then you can increase the speed and it's maintaining pressure. It's a good pressure on the back of the drill to make sure you're pushing through in the metal. Um, obviously, you know, it's drilling. So it's not rocket science. However, just a couple things to keep in mind when you're doing through metal. Done. We've got four holes. Now it's time for the rivet gun. I found the right fitting. I went through the instructions just to kind of figure it out. I've never used a threaded rivet gun before, so I want to make sure I was just putting it all together right. But I've got the right size in here. And now we, I'm only going to do this to show you, but you open it up. You take your rivet. You pop it on there. There we go. And now this will go into the hole and then you'll pull these handles together and it'll put a rivet right there and I'll have a nice place solid and secure that I can go ahead and mount those bolts to. So I'm going to go put that in and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Rivets in. I got no hands on it and you just back it off with this guy. Let's see if I can do this one handed without dropping things. Sorry for the shake. There you go. Rivet. Done. It's clean. It sits nice. It's not going anywhere. And now I can put a bolt in there. Let's get the other three done. I want to note when you're using this, don't expect you're going to get here. It's not going to close that tight because that's a complete seal. So if I, I'll show you what one looks like that I made. Here we go. See that? silver part there that right there is the other side of the rivet that it pulled in so you're never going to have it completely closed you want it tight you want to make sure it's tight and you can kind of jiggle this around make sure it's in there tight but you're never going to fully close this all right and probably the hardest thing about doing these is making sure you're nice and set in straight when you start to pull it together and that's probably we're going to put the most strength in but little tip i'm going to keep going i got two more to go the rivets are in and now we can go ahead and get this guy mounted in. Nice job. All right, we're mounted. I gotta get two more of the M6s to put up there, but that's plenty for right now to hold it in place. I only have the one bolt because I wanted to see how high up I could get it. I wanna see how it looks here before I go down anymore. And besides, this is meant to hold anything from a 25 to a 65 inch TV. I'm only holding literally a seven pound 32 inch so the single bolt's gonna be more than enough you can see this spins around nice and easy the back plating is already on so this is a visa um i know they do 200 by 200 400 by 400 this is like 100 by 200 so i actually use the um extenders on this one to mount everything to the bracket and as you can see these two will fit right there and the other one pops through and then I have the nut to go on the other side. So uh, let's go ahead and get it up and see how it looks. We are up, now to connect it. One of the handy things I like about this mount is it's got the hollow pole so that I can feed my power cord right up through, right out the top and I can run it right along the same place like I did there, right? And I can plug it in down there. So we're gonna have a little small short cord running down. So I'll put extra cabling. I will tuck it in the pipe here and I'll have the extension cord run up and meet it here. Let's get it wired. We got a TV. I'm happy. I think it's gonna work out well, especially at night. Like I said, I'm not planning on being here in the middle of the day trying to watch something, but it's a good size and it works for what it is. Everything got mounted. Um, I will say before you just go ahead and mount and everything, one thing I kinda, got caught up with was running the wire i thought i'd be able to run it no problem right up through the pole here um but i actually had to take out the bolt so i had to take this bolt out and that one to get the cable to run up and through um so i would just say if you're doing one of these pole mounts just make sure that 
before you get everything all bolted together, get those bolts nice and loose, get the TV on it, and then run the wire and then slide the bolts in. Just hold the TV up with one hand. I was doing it. You run the wire up and out so it's sitting there and then you just throw the bolts in and you're good to go. Um, as you can see, we tuck the extra wire up in here. It's all nice out of the way. It comes right out the top where I want it to. And now I've just got to do my zip tie right up along. I'm going to go right up along this bar here. I'm just going to zip tie. And you can see I've got little openings right on the roof panel here. So I can zip, 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 zip right down back to the wire. And I just got to tidy up some things. Small. And then we'll get the cover on. The cover's going to fit real nice. I'll show you that. Let's get that on quick so you can see what the cover looks like. Covered. Again, fits right over the front. And then in the back, you can see here, everything Velcros, even the bottom here. There's a whole Velcro patch that comes around the bottom. This comes all up and over the top. And again, we're not trying to protect it from um, hurricanes here. So this is gonna be more than enough, especially with the screen. One of the things I noticed about this pergola is even with the screen, when the screen is closed, especially, it doesn't get wet in there. I mean, you gotta get a lot of driving rain to get through the screen or even off underneath the top at an angle to get the edges wet. And even then, this top part here is usually dry. So I'm not overly concerned. So that's it. It was quick, it was easy. I'm really glad I did those rivets instead of just screws in there. Um, I think that's, that's gonna make a difference in terms of longevity. Um, I'm happy with how it looks. I'm happy with where it sits. Um, it's not, I mean, it's up, but it's not so high up. You're gonna be standing there like this trying to watch TV at night, which is comfortable. Um, and I'm excited to give it a try out, right? So we've got the fire pit, maybe crank that up tonight. And we'll come out here and see if, uh, everybody enjoys themselves. So guys have a great one and we'll talk again soon.